Nigeria's foreign minister, Jofrio Yema, has confirmed that 50 trafficked Nigerian women have been rescued from Lebanon and have been returned home. They have all been placed in quarantine following their arrival on Sunday as a precaution against coronavirus. Last month, a Nigerian woman working as a maid in Lebanon was rescued after being put up for sale on Facebook for $1,000. According to the UN, thousands of women and girls from Nigeria and other African countries are trafficked every year. They are often lured away with promises of jobs in Europe or Asia, but usually end up being exploited as domestic maids or forced into prostitution. Joining us from New York City is Yvonne Benson Idahosa, Executive Director of Pathfinders Justice Initiative, a leading anti-sex trafficking NGO in Nigeria. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me on. Now, amid the COVID-19, we still have issues of trafficking staring at us. Your organization works directly with rescued trafficked persons. How serious is this unfortunate reality for us in Nigeria? You know, I mean, even prior to um, the pandemic, you know, this was something that um, Nigeria has been dealing with. When we look at the numbers as far as trafficking uh, victims within the country, we're looking at about 1.3 million um, people across the board, right? Uh, but as a result of COVID-19, um, obviously the situation has escalated. Um, a lot of desperation has, um, has resulted from a lot of the scarcity, um, particularly economically um, and the lockdown. And so as a result, you see a lot of people trying to leave Nigeria voluntarily or involuntarily. And so that has increased um, the number of uh, trafficking victims. But one would expect that with the lockdown and the travel restriction, this would have come down. Why the spike at a time when lockdown is across the globe? Well, I think it, it really comes down to an abuse of vulnerabilities, right? So the women that we're generally dealing with are women who are within, uh, who are those who are living in abject poverty, living on that, you know, one dollar fifty uh, a day or so. And um, we know that Nigeria has now become um, the global poverty capital of the world. And so as a result of that, a lot of people don't have a lot of cushion, you know, in their budget to be able to, you know, draw from their savings or to be able to, um, you know, um, lean on family members. Uh, like uh, other other classes within Nigeria might be able to. And so as a result of that, you see a lot of desperation, a lot of people returning to the streets, um, a lot of survivors returning to the streets um, to engage in prostitution, but generally also trying to leave the country, trying to look for other means um, to be able to support themselves. How is the pandemic affecting survivors of sex trafficking in the work that you do, as you are aware? You know, again, like I mentioned, I mean, there's a lot of desperation. Um, a lot of our survivors do not even have um, the resources to be able to do things that, you know, we, you know, the general public has been encouraged to do, such as, you know, stay, stay uh, six feet away from one another, uh, be able to, you know, wash your hands consistently. Uh, most of these people don't even have the resources to, to get the clean water to be able to do things like that and do the social distancing that is being recommended because people have to go out every day to earn, um, to earn their living. And so what we're finding is that as a result of that scarcity, as a result of that um, gap in uh, financial means, a lot of them, like I said, are returning uh, to the streets and trying to, you know, are desperately trying to move forward um, in, in amidst the reality of what they're facing. And so what we're trying to do as an organization is, is, is fill in that gap, right, but by providing uh, the palliatives that a lot of the government is supposed to be doing um, in in uh, in Nigeria, and so what we're doing is trying to find a way to provide not just um, you know uh, food and um, you know masks and basic hygiene items, but also address the mental health because this is really triggering for a lot of survivors who have already gone through some of the worst trauma that anybody could have ever experienced. And so we're, we have counselors on hand that are helping to address their mental health as well as their physical health, um, because many of our survivors were, are HIV positive or dealing um, with other, um, with other um, physical issues. You are doing your bit, but should our authorities and the powers that be be listening to you right now, what would you ask that they address as a matter of urgency and utmost importance when it comes to traffic and trafficked persons? 
Well, you know, I mean, I think when we talk to our survivors, um, you know, they're our primary source of um, intelligence, right, on this issue. And most of them tell us that they would stay in Nigeria if there was a way um, that the government, you know, for example, would empower women. You know, that seems to be a big issue. We know that women who are educated, women who are empowered, um, tend to, you know, marry later in life. They tend to have uh, children later in life and have fewer children. We also know that they tend to invest more of their resources, more of their um, finances into the community itself than their male counterparts, right? And so I think what I would say is that this needs to be a priority. Um, the empowerment and the education of women needs to be a priority um, for the Nigerian government. Um, and, and I think another thing, too, that we've been hearing from our survivors is that you know, just, there seems to be a lack of basic concern for the people who are at the bottom, right? For the masses who are suffering the most out of um, as a result of this pandemic. And so I think if there was more concern, if there was more effort to actually provide the resources for, for, for the masses of people, you know, over, over 80 million people that are living in abject poverty in Nigeria, that would go a long way in, um, in having the average Nigerian person feel like they actually matter within the country. All right, you talked about mental health. I, I wanted to speak to those that are watching uh, right now who might have been a victim of uh, trafficking and they're here in Nigeria trying to survive this pandemic. What would you say to them as a form of reassurance? So for those that are, you know, doubting whether they can survive. Right. You know, I think one thing that you know we tell our survivors, one thing I've, I've made very clear to them is that you are strong enough. You have already, you know, overcome some of the worst um, atrocities that could ever happen to a human being. These are women who have been living, who were trapped in, in um, sex trafficking for two or three years, being forced to have sex with you know, 10, 15 men every single day of the year um, and didn't have any way to get out. They were mentally abused, physically abused, um, financially abused, right? These are women who have overcome some of the worst. And so I remind them of who they are, right? So if you've overcome something as, as heinous as that, as horrific or as horrific as that, with support, um, through this time, you will be able to go overcome this as well. And so I think one of the things I consistently try to encourage people is to use their past as, as, as a way to encourage themselves to move beyond this. Thank you very much for sharing your time and your thoughts with us on the news. Thank you so much for having me. Be safe out there.